Oh, I've got my heater matrix back. Picked it up from my pal. Um, his friends had a good look at it, measured it up, and he's off making himself one. Well, I'd hoped he might make me a few spares for it, but uh, it's a bit worse for wear. The casing's rusted through, but first job, I think, before I do anything, is going to put some air through them and uh, see if it actually holds. Uh, well, see if it'll hold water as opposed to air, but I'm going to fuff on it. And if it does that, then the next job is basically try and take it apart, get that flushed out, and repair the uh, casing, which is going to be fun. Anyway, we'll see. Well, I've fuffed down it, and it's, uh, it's not bad, but I do think there's a bit of a leak on it. It looks as if it's designed to unscrew this side which means then that the heating element can pull out. So, we'll see how many of these unscrew and how many of them have to be ground off. Let's see if we can get the thing open. Short answer to that was three came out and the rest got ground off. I actually cleared out the bird nest before I uh, loaned it. So we'll put that bit aside. So all I want to do is basically take that out Give it a brush off and then see what's uh, what leaks and what don't. It's a pretty basic design. My friends actually give me basically a, a new, a used but good condition core out of an MG. So if this does leak, I might have to see about modifying the whole thing and see whether it will take that. Let's have a look. So that's the core. Um, mainly it's just blocked up with crap by the look of it. <clears throat> Look like uh, larvae, larvae uh, husks. Unless I wonder it bloody blows anything through though, because it, <laughs> it's not exactly free flowing, is it? You know, cut you couple that with a um, squirrel blower. It's ever likely they're not going to push much air through. Anyway, let's go clean it up and uh, we'll see whether we can get any uh, any means of testing it. That's what we flushed out of it. So not too bad. And it froze all right. I was rather surprised at the lack of stuff that came out. So I thought we'd give it a bash with the dishwasher cleaner. So I've just done three rinses without basically put it in, leave it 10 minutes, pour it out. Yeah, there was a lot of sludge. <laughs> it's just about running clear now. So it's on its last wash. Uh, I've also found it cleans a lot quicker with our hot water rather than cold. So uh, throwing cost concerns into the breeze. We've run the hot water for a while. Um, looks like I've got a bit of cleaning up in my sink as well. And we'll give that another 20 minutes and then uh, pour that lot out. Well, so the next bit to have a look at is the actual framing. Um, it best I can establish is that every, everything that's on the downside is rusted. So that, that bit goes against the bulkhead and is the hole that comes through the bulkhead here and you've got the um, dashboard on this side. So that bit runs along the, virtually the top of the footwell. That's the end piece. And then that bit's the top side. Um, so roughly, roughly, I've got to go from here down and round and back. There's a bit of snot here. So arguably I want to come to sort of halfway along here. And I've got to try and keep the dimensions about about where it's at. So I'm not going to try folding a single piece. I'll just make it up in a series and then stitch them together. The rest of it's basically surface rust. The side piece, other than the, uh, the stumps of the hardened steel screws, that, that will uh, clean up and go back on. Bring you back when I've made some progress. 
Well, I had thought I was going to be making it up in multiple pieces, but uh, I thought I'd give it a go as I've got a couple of sheets of this 40 thou thick or 1 mil thick steel, and that's worked out all right. So I can slide it off here and either do a butt weld or a, a small overlap and then seam weld down the corner on that one. Yeah. All remains now is a lot of chopping and grinding and a bit of, bit of welding. Chap on YouTube, Fitz's Garage, I think it's called. He just uses a piece of I-beam, various bits of steel, and um, yeah, basically cutting and, cutting and bashing. I can manage those. I'm just having a way up before I start chopping it. I need these tags. Well, they're like a bracket just to support the... Uh, the one each side if you have a look just to support the heating matrix could do with putting them in before welding anything and then i'm weighing up how's best to fix that bottom edge to the far end because i think once i start grinding there ain't going to be a lot of decent metal um, and i don't want to have to make up that end piece i could rivet it that's a fairly harmless approach and i don't see that it being a big deal if I do I'd rather have it welded oh, I have to try my little tiny tips mm. I'm going to mark on my hole size on there yeah I think we'll get the hole done and then we'll look at welding it there's not much of it left so I've cleaned up the edges and they were basically little tiny pin um, spot welds. So I'll probably just be tacking it round and then I might go around the inside with seam sealer so it's nice and tight, airtight. Anyway, just got to try and see whether it all fits now. Well, it's one of them things where the clamps are in the way of everything that you want to put a clamp on. Um, it's not a bad fit round the back here. This wants a little bit of a massage because I've bent the original piece. There's a bit of a gap there, so I have to be careful when I'm welding that. Probably weld that that edge down there from the outside. Tack that along, and then I think that'll probably just end up being seam sealed. But yeah, I mean, if you look at it, you can see the original um, spot welds. There was little holes, so it's not exactly structural. Anyway, um, I've got, I'm have got. i not going to do any welding tonight, it's too late. And uh, don't want to burn my shop down. But that'll be my job tomorrow, tickle up the outside. And then uh, I'll probably just go around and do the corners. You know, tack it where it touches kind of thing. It's quite an odd, odd shape though, because this edge runs in. And then there's a return here. Excuse your teeth. Yeah. So I've got to kind of put a weld on to weld that to it and then grind this edge back to it. It's just easier grinding material off than trying to trim it all right size and then find out you're a couple of mil short. Um, that's the original sheet edge, which everything's worked off. And that's picked up on that face there. And the end of a tab I've left on here just to position it. But once that's welded along there, give it a tack there, it'll be all right. Yeah. I'm reasonably happy with that. Be a lot happier if it did have all this rust on it, but you know, there we go. Well, I've uh, welded in the brackets that support the heating element here on each side. And the heating element's got a strip of foam down the back edges and slide it up the side so that basically holds it still so they're not actually that accurate I thought they'd have got to be bob on but they're not uh, I've tacked this on it's a bit crappy but it'll clean up and it's most of it's not seen um, so I've got to go around now and basically do the tack along tack along these edges grind it back tack it in and uh, 
that'll be pretty much it with the exception of the top bracket needs fitting on but i'm going to offer it up make sure i've got it in the right spot and i need to remove the stumps of the screws that were on this cover plate and then give it all a good clean down and then get some uh, zinc based primer on it just looking at that that's got, got, got one pot rivet in there for some reason maybe the weld failed i don't know it's a bit bit crappy and i could probably pick up another one for slightly better condition for somewhere between 50 and 100 quid but it's got to be functional and it won't rust for another 20 years so what do i care well, once again rusty metal's proven challenging um that's the side that's removable um i think what i'll end up doing is once i've given a coat of paint inside and out i'll put the heat exchanger in fit this side screw it in and then i'll probably go around and seam seal that joint because there's not enough room for neoprene uh the gasket but you can see these are no good i mean some of it will tighten up as it's screwed but not all and it wants to be as airtight as possible to get warm air into the cab rather than the engine bay it'll be all right next job is uh going to offer it up um just weigh up where i've got to put the other foot on here screws on um and i need to weigh up where the bracket fits it's currently sitting upside down it sits that way up there's a bracket on the top side so i'm gonna go and do that now and it's a bit snug that bracket will need adjusting because of the angle of the uh, foot but it's got slots on the bolts there's about uh, three eighths of an inch gap for foam between the um, well, I can't push it up any tighter, basically. Um, and that fixing, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I'm going to try and poke a bolt, drill the hole and come, come bring the nut bolt up from the inside. Anyway, I'll mark my position. Oh, I can live with that. I've got to put a, like a foam gasket behind there and I um, don't think there's enough room to extend that but that'll flex down the other side sat all right so I think we'll have that off now and take the side piece off actually no we won't we'll drill drill the holes for these these fixings drill them through we'll just offset them from where the old holes were and then uh, give it a good coat of paint on the inside and then some seam sealer on the inside and then spray it up externally. I think I've said it before, but I absolutely despise self-tappers. However, I did buy myself a few. I think they're all the same uh, diameter, they're just different lengths. And I bought some of those uh, captive nuts actually for the dashboard. But as it happens, these small ones the right size so all i've got to do is just put another hole in a bit alongside the old the old one and hopefully that'll be enough if i had a brain i'd be dangerous i thought i'd just check see where them screws sit i mean that's a recipe for disaster if ever there was one it's not touching it but a bit of banging about and it will do so i think i will leave these two out I might measure up for a pot rivet because I said they're only aluminium and uh, whereas these screws are stainless that would leave these two and these two off but, yeah like I say I'd be dangerous if I had a brain back on the uh, wiper motor I've just put the rigged it power supply to it put it across the terminals and i got nothing now i can't find my battery my uh, continuity tester which is knocking about somewhere so anyway i thought i'd take it out and take this sh the shaft and the motor out and just have a look see what condition the brush is in they could all be fused together uh, i've got the drive shaft out that moves back and forth all right so that's that's good it slides inside a what might be ptfe but i suspect it's just a nylon track 
um, the oil and the grease that I've put in was doing its job. So the next job is take that out and then just see if that shaft will rotate. I've took the end. Oh, I thought that was the retainer for it, but uh, the only other thing is to take off these back two screws and then pull the motor off that way. So we'll have a go. Well, nothing was seized. Um, all the bearing faces are good. The uh, you can call it the armature. That one's a bit of a clean off. And the brushes have got some wear on them, but uh, plenty left. Um, there looks to be some. I don't know whether that's old grease that's burnt or not. Anyway, so I'm going to clean up the armature. Um, I can't see any scuff marks on there, so the bearings are still good. It's not bouncing around. And the next job is to take off that uh, wheel, worm wheel there, which is held on with a um, circuit on the back. It rotates all right, uh, but somewhere hidden behind there, I think, is the um, the pause or park mode, if you like. Well, I've cleaned everything up, um, and I've given the terminals a bit more of a polish. And uh, we're at this stage. So uh, I think it was a combination of dried on grease got it stuck and uh, me spinning that round's helped and then cleaning up the terminals. So we'll get it back lashed on and uh, hopefully that'll be it. I mean, I don't exactly fill you with confidence, but that is all they do. The best bit is I've managed to find the bracket which holds it onto the bulkhead, so I'm gonna make that. Hoorah! Well, oh, that's it all built back up. Um, I've put in some, I think it's 10 mil thick foam, this stuff. And basically gone all around the perimeter of it so it forms a nice seal in the box. And then um, having finished building it up. Ew. I've seam sealed everywhere that there was a, a bit of a gap. So it should be pretty damn, it's as efficient as it's going to get, let's put it like that. Uh, I'm not going to stick it up on the card today because it's only about three degrees outside and I want the seam sealer to go off. Uh, and I'll probably curse it later if I have to take it all apart, but I can't see why unless that core leaks and I couldn't find any kind of leak on it. So unless I've washed out the rad weld. <laughs> Or plug stop or whatever it's called anyway um that's about as much as i'll get done this week uh so i'll finish up now get a video together and get this up for you um we've got a few bits of spraying to be getting on with but uh i'm just waiting until i've got enough of a batch to mix up some paint and then get on with it hope you enjoyed uh next thing i'll find is the snail blower yeah, don't know what sort of state that's in. One final thought, do a drill a hole in here to let the water out. I don't think it'll make any difference because I think as soon as it gets warm and blows air through, it should be evaporating it and drying it anyway. I don't think, uh, I think it's gotten rusty from being sat in a field for however many years. What do you think? Put a comment below. Ta-ta for now.